May I speak in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! The Lord be with you. Warmest greetings to all of you, brothers and sisters in Christ, in the parish of St. Mary's on the Limpopo, on this, the fourth Sunday in the season of Eastertide. It is my hope and constant prayer that you are keeping well, you are safe and in good spirits during this time. In our church's calendar, we are almost halfway through the season of Eastertide, a season of 50 days that began on Easter Sunday and ends on the day of Pentecost, on Sunday the 31st of May. On each of the first three Sundays of the season of Easter, our lectionary readings led us through encounters of the risen Lord with those who knew him. We were invited to reflect on our own relationship with the Lord, our own encounters with the risen Jesus. On the first Sunday of Easter, we reflected on how Jesus comes to us in our times of sorrow and comforts us, as he comforted Mary when she wept at the empty tomb. On the second Sunday of Easter, we were invited to reflect on how Jesus calms our fears and our anxieties, as he did for the disciples when they were afraid and they were hiding together at night behind locked doors. John's Gospel tells us in chapter 20 that the risen Jesus came and stood among the disciples. Peace be with you, he said. Then he showed them his hands and his side. On seeing the Lord, the disciples were overjoyed. Jesus said again, Peace be with you. Last Sunday, we reflected on how Jesus walks with us in all our journeys, however challenging they may be, as he walked with his disciples on the road to Emmaus. We also considered how we are changed when we invite Jesus into every aspect of our lives to stay with us, and when we share the sacrament of Holy Eucharist together. At the end of the disciples' journey to Emmaus, Luke's Gospel tells us in chapter 24 that they pressed Jesus, Stay with us, for the evening approaches, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he had sat down with them at table, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and offered it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him. This Sunday, and the two Sundays that follow, we are called to reflect on ways in which the risen Christ continues to minister to us as his disciples today. This week, we consider the powerful theme of Jesus' ministry as the Good Shepherd. A number of Old Testament references may be found where the image of shepherd is used as a metaphor for God, or for a ruler or king, one who cares for his people as a shepherd cares for his flock. Psalm 23, the psalm set for us today, is one such scripture and points to Jesus' ministry as our shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. A God of love who provides for us in our times of need, who leads us through difficult circumstances as our defence and our guide, in whom we may trust and who does not abandon us. Surely your goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The New Testament is also rich with images that point to the love and care that Jesus has for each one of us as our shepherd. Luke tells us this moving parable in chapter 15 of his Gospel, when Jesus responds to the Pharisees and scribes who criticise him and murmur their disapproval. This fellow, they said, welcomes sinners and eats with them. Jesus answered them with this parable. If one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them, does he not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is missing until he finds it? And when he does, he lifts it joyfully to his shoulders and goes home to call his friends and neighbours together. Rejoice with me, he cries, I have found my lost sheep. In the same way, Jesus told them, there will be greater joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who do not need to repent. Our reading this morning from John's Gospel, John chapter 10, verses 1 to 10, extends the metaphor of Jesus as the Good Shepherd to include, to include Jesus as the gatekeeper to the sheepfold. Jesus is the one who knows each of his sheep intimately, 
who cares for them and loves them, the source of their life, that they may have life more abundantly, and he is the source of their salvation. He brings us a message of hope, of comfort and encouragement, especially at this time when many of us may be fearful, uncertain about the future, or feel isolated. Those who enter the sheepfold through the gatekeeper are saved, and for those who go out through the gatekeeper, he provides rich pasture, he nourishes them, he protects them, and he willingly lays down his life for them. He protects them by keeping them, keeping out the thief and the robber, by keeping out false prophets and false teachers. Quoting from John's Gospel, chapter 10, Jesus calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought them all out, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow, because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, they will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Our reading this morning from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 42 to 47, show us how early Christians responded to, responded to Jesus' ministry, his teachings as the Good Shepherd. Their response gives us an example that we have followed through many centuries, a response that is still relevant for us today. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 summarizes this response and reads, The early disciples met constantly to hear the apostles teach and to share the common life, to break bread and to pray. Four disciplines are presented here, and it is worth remembering them as we strive to make them a habit as far as possible in this time of lockdown. The first discipline is that the disciples met regularly in fellowship and community as the body of Christ. And while at this time, when we practice social distancing and we cannot be together at St. Mary's each Sunday in our worshiping community, it is possible to keep up our connections, to keep up our fellowship by using other means, by keeping in touch as the body of Christ through social media, for instance, through the WhatsApp groups in our parish, through SMSs, through emails and phone calls. The second discipline that the early Christians practiced was that they heard the apostles' teaching. For us today, we follow the writings of the apostles as they are set down in the scriptures, the New Testament, the four gospels, the acts of the apostles and the epistles. If you are not already doing so, I invite you to make a commitment during this period of isolation to read a portion of scripture each day, perhaps make a commitment to read through one of the gospels, a small portion at a time, Perhaps you may choose the Gospel of Luke, and once you have finished reading through Luke, begin Luke's second book, The Acts of the Apostles. The early Christians also prayed together. The power of prayer cannot be underestimated. It is one of the most effective ways of communicating with God. And the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer, forms the foundation of our daily prayer life. Our Anglican prayer books are also a valuable resource for prayer and praying the offices of morning prayer and evening prayer each day are an enlightening discipline for us. The early Christians met also to break bread together, and from this we understand that they regularly shared the sacrament of Holy Eucharist or Holy Communion. During this time, when we cannot come to, together to be together and share the sacrament of Holy Eucharist at St. Mary's each Sunday, we are able to share a spiritual communion, communion with each other, as we did last week. Here is one of three versions of spiritual communion that are printed in our prayer books on page 516, the Anima Christi, or Soul of Christ. Soul of Christ, sanctify us. Body of Christ, save us. Blood of Christ, refresh us. Water from the side of Christ, wash us. Passion of Christ, strengthen us. O good Jesus, hear us. Within your wounds, Hide us. Let us never be separated from you. From the malicious enemy, defend us. In the hour of our deaths, call us and bid us come to you, that with your saints we may praise you for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit 
be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the name of Christ. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia.